What's up you guys, it's Two Bricks, and today I have the rare triple mock video for you guys. Uh, really, it's mo uh, one mock that has been severely modified to create three different versions of the same ship. Of course, if you guys are Star Wars fans, and prequel fans in particular, you'll recognize the Delta Seven Ether Sprite Jedi Starfighter from uh, Attack the Clones, the Clone Wars 2D animated show, and the Clone Wars 3D animated show, respectively. And uh, these are my three favorite versions of this ship. Um, but of course, canonically, there are dozens of them, each Jedi having customized their own one. Uh, I didn't have the, the parts or the bandwidth to uh, make uh, you know, all of them by any stretch, but I just picked out the ones that I personally like the best, which is um, you know, Obi-Wan's uh, that he first rides around in Attack of the Clones when he's kind of being chased through the minefield, uh, Anakin's from the Clone Wars 2D animated show, or sorry, the 3D one where he's... Um, in particular, I remember the, the astromech droid that he had sabotaging his ship, and that was a fun little uh, series of episodes. And then this really, really badass super modified one from the 2D animated show <laughs> where it's just tricked out to the absolute max. So um, yeah, so those are the three that we're going to be taking a look at today. Uh, instructions for all of these are available on my web store at rebrickable.com. Check the links down in the description. And every purchase that you guys make does help to support the channel and kind of increase the ability uh, for me to be able to devote more time and resources to bringing you more mocks in the future. So if you guys want to support the channel, other than liking and subscribing, that is the most direct way to do so. And I really appreciate it. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive in and take a look at the models. All right, you guys, so here is the OB-1 version, which is sitting on a very simple stand that I made to um, go with all of these. They all have the same uh, attachment point at the bottom, which is just this modified plate with the stud hole in the middle there, and you can just rotate the ship around. Uh, it's really light, so there's no issue about it, you know, wanting to tip over or anything. The model itself is is really small and, and yeah, really physically light, uh, as well as being light on parts. So um, yeah, so that's kind of a, a nice feature about it. It's not going to take up a ton of shelf space, but I think it has a really nice overall look. I mean, the, the kind of the dart shape of this um, is really sleek, and I did my best to kind of, you know, um, take in all of the different markings and color blocking on the ship. Uh, so that was actually really tricky for, for this one in particular. There's a lot of really specific markings on this one. Like for example, the, um, the olive green that kind of goes into these stripes down here. And I, I kind of approximated that with brackets as best I could using dark tan brackets and um, also some dark gray ones in there. And I think that kind of all blends together pretty well. Um, and then, yeah, just having this kind of white center stripe, which then gets interrupted by the a really specific sort of lightning bolt red streak that runs through the middle here and then coming back to all of this green that kind of tucks under the wing um, it was just all really really tricky to figure all of that stuff out and particularly like getting the the little red kind of pinstriping to go around this um, section of the cockpit here was really really tricky to figure out <laughs> you know wanting i wanted to be able to have uh, the cockpit be easily accessible and usable so um, figuring all that out took a minute but yeah i'm really happy with the overall end result even just little things like having the white accents underneath the four uh, laser cannons um, was was really tricky, but uh, but was fun to figure it out. So and you know it's always so satisfying when you labor over something and you try a million different versions and then it finally clicks into place. Uh, there's nothing like it. So yeah, really happy that I was able to get that figured out. Uh, the wings are um, kind of locked in place. They they have two mixel style ball joints in the center here that hold them in place. So there is some play to them. Um, but very little. Um, they're designed to just be kind of pushed up to the highest angle that they'll comfortably sit and they kind of get blocked in by these cheese slope pieces. So the angle that you see uh, here is designed to be the viewing angle. So it's just a very, very slight slope down on either side for these triangular wings. And that just gives you that nice triangular look from the front there. And it just really helps to give the ship that super fast, sleek look that it has. And I really like that. Um, another thing that was really tricky to capture was this the shaping of this center section, which just sort of grows up from the front here and just blends in and, and kind of comes around the, the cockpit canopy here. And, and all of that was really, really difficult to figure out. But, um, but yeah, I think I, I came up with a solution where it's minimally blocky. You know, you have a minimum amount of faces, but it still allows you to get all of the color detail in there that you would want to see. So um, yeah, got the standard Republic logo there. We have the R4 uh, droid here, which is built in, so it's, it's just his head. And um, I'm presuming he's all kind of all wired into the ship there. So um, the ship is his body in a way, um, which is kind of funny. And then we have the little, um, the dark brown uh, pieces in here to indicate the kind of 
exhaust um, wear and tear on the, the back of the ship here. So I think that looks really good. And just a little bit of black striping around the edge. Um, yeah, it's, I think it, it has a really sleek color scheme. So yeah, um, uh, pleased with that. And then we'll take a look under the, uh, Take a look at the underside here. We have um, the accurate color scheme continuing through with the kind of um, the different sections of the engine having different um, color scheme here with the, this is uh, brown, but it's meant to be uh, representing dark red. Um, in the instructions, I'll see uh, which is the cheapest piece, um, but sometimes dark red pieces can be expensive. So I substitute them for reddish brown because they blend pretty well together. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of see the full complete look here. It does have the uh, retractable landing gear so you can pull out this front skid and then these uh, ones on the side come down and you just pull out this little pistol piece which makes up the foot and you just kind of get those to roughly the right angle and you can put it down in the gear no problem uh, if you do have some older kind of worn out parts i was noticing i had a couple of clip pieces that weren't that didn't have uh, the friction required to hold itself up and i would just have to kind of swap those out for for newer ones uh, otherwise you may get kind of saggy landing gear since it is just one piece um, holding it up and you know that's just kind of something you have to play around with but hopefully you have good luck and you have uh, nice quality parts that hold up together so uh, yeah so that's that uh, pretty simple and then we have the opening cockpit so let me just angle that forward so you can see here just kind of it needs to slide underneath this red section so what you do is you just kind of push on this cockpit bubble until the middle part pops up and then you can just pull that over Obi-Wan's head and then on the inside here you can see uh, his lightsaber is stored away in that little gap. I figured, you know, in two parts, but it's in there. <laughs> and I figured if I have that space in the center, I may as well use it for something. Uh, and then in the back here, you can see that the um, these kind of opening spare parts bins, which were a feature in the movie, are also present. And when you tip that up, you can see uh, there's a piece in here which represents the communications array. So um, in Attack of the Clones, Obi-Wan transmits a message, it actually should be on this side <laughs> if we're being accurate to the movie, uh, transmits a long range message and uh, he needs a, a little radar dish to do so and it kind of pops out of the ship. And so I just decided the spare parts bin could hold that spare part uh, that you could then add to kind of make it more accurate. So um, of course in the film, Obi-Wan uses these to trick a missile that's tracking him into blowing up the tools and not the ship. And so. I really felt like that was an important thing to include in there and you know it closes up nicely there's no real kind of major gaps around there once it's closed and i think that just has a really good look to it so there's that um so that's kind of it for action features as far as that goes and uh, of course the other one i guess you could say is that obi-wan uh, is able to sit in his cockpit so we have a little plate down in there to hold onto his feet with the, the little kind of um, the panel piece with the little uh, clutch bar in the center there that grabs onto minifig legs. And then he has a nice little console here with two control sticks and a little display screen. And I just think that uh, that's pretty much all you need. It's got a nice kind of plush interior and uh, you know, a little headrest there for him. And he just kind of slips in really easy and his hands kind of naturally go to where the control sticks would be. Close it up and he's good to go. And next up here we have the Delta 7B, which is the version that Anakin Skywalker pilots during the Clone Wars. He, uh, Anakin Skywalker, of course, accented his particular fighter yellow because Anakin loves yellow in his um, attack craft. <laughs> he had uh, yellow accents on his pod racer and then uh, the Naboo starfighter that he flew. So um, yeah, you'll see that all through his career before he became Darth Vader. So kind of an ominous uh, color scheme here for this ship when you really think about it. Um, I tried to capture the specifics of this as best as I could. Like the this should be a continuous triangular line that goes back here, but this the way that this build is structured, it requires these panel pieces um, for the wings to be able to slot in underneath. And obviously those don't come at you know specific angles like that. So I just went ahead and kind of tried to indicate using this wedge plate in here, um, the triangular look as best I could. And I think that it works out decently well. And then he does have these kind of little fanged yellow parts that come off to the side here, which I use these, um, these yellow uh, quarter round tiles to replicate. Uh, got the standard Republic logo once again here. This time it's white though. Um, I had two different versions of this um, decorative piece. I have this gray one which has a sticker on it and then I have this white printed one and I actually m greatly prefer the white printed one because it just it just looks a lot better I think and it's it's your chances of it being centered up nicely here are much better so I went ahead and included that with this and the other 
um, Anakin version, um, and that's what's in the instructions. Um, just so you guys know. Um, and then, yeah, the, the only kind of major difference with the Delta 7B, uh, the engines are slightly differently configured, um, but other than that, it's that the uh, astromech droid has been centered so that Anakin can take R2 with him on missions, because um, he's, again, Anakin is all about his attachments. He can't let things go, so he had to have his personal droid that he loves come with him on missions, so the ship had to be modified. So there you go, that's, that's where the Delta 7 uh, came from, or the Delta 7B, I mean. Um, so yeah, uh, other than the color scheme, the build is fairly similar. We have the same kind of configuration here for the for the blasters. We have a slightly different way that this is all arranged in here to accommodate this um, this coloring in here with the kind of um, yellow triangle or a uh, yellow um, circular kind of shape up here, and then this these wedge plates. But other than that, most of this is fairly similar. And then coming into the back here, I just had to slightly change up the way that this was done. Um, because of the new design and where this um, where this windshield kind of plugs in, there isn't as much room to pop the canopy open, so I had to just kind of leave a little bit of extra room there for that. So that's a slightly different um, look to it, but I think it still works really well. Um, and then, of course, R2, you can just move these little um, plated kind of sections here uh, out of the way, and you can pop him out really easily. And his full body just fits down in there nice and snug. And then uh, when you want to put him back, he just has that little kind of centered stud there that he plugs into and you just pull these in and he fits in there nice and snug. And I think the, the way that these kind of hug up against his shoulders and it, it fits down in there really nicely, I think that's a good look. Um, yeah, and then you can't really see any indication of him under there other than a teeny bit of his feet poking through if you look really carefully on the underside there. Um, the engines are uh, slightly different in the way that they're configured because the back section here, as you can see on Obi-Wan's one, uh, it kind of comes to a point, whereas here uh, it kind of goes in and then back out, it kind of flares out again. And it has a different color, engine exhaust yellow again. I'm not sure if that's um, you know meant to go with the color scheme or uses a different fuel in his, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it, it looks different in the show. So we have again, the spare part canisters are present here, although I don't know what Anakin carries in there, so I didn't really feel the need to load anything up. I don't know if he has the same kind of, um, you know, radar dish equipment, uh, so I didn't include that. Uh, but you can obviously put anything you like in there, lightsaber handle piece maybe. Um, and there is still some room up here, um, kind of on this, this little inside section, but not as much. Again, obviously, because R2 is now sitting in that gap, so you can't put a full lightsaber in here, but again, you could probably put the hilt, um, or you can put the hilt, and then you could maybe put the blade here in the back. Um, I haven't actually tried it, but I think that would work. Um, so yeah, that's a kind of a, a way that you could make that work. Um, so the landing gear is black, and we have the yellow accenting on the underside, and then really it's about the same. I, I did actually use these kind of claw pieces because um, th there wasn't any kind of um, piece that I was satisfied with in black that would give me the look that I wanted for the tips of the landing gear. So uh, instead of those pistol pieces, it relies on these sort of claw or horn um, parts here, but I think that works out decently well. Uh, and then, yeah, that's really the major kind of differences. So there is your Delta 7B. Um, I think it has a, a really cool kind of uh, aggressive look to it with the yellow where it just really feels, somehow it feels more, I don't know, more mean. <laughs> it kind of is, uh, oh, maybe because everything's kind of more pointed in the, in the color scheme. The, the Obi-Wan version feels much more balanced in how it's just got that kind of centralized stripe, you know? And this feels a lot more kind of like it's coming at you. So yeah, that's that one. And uh, I really like how it looks in comparison. Oh, I forgot to show you the interior, sorry. There's uh, Clone Wars era Anakin with his little kind of flight um, head headset thing, <laughs> which I like. Slightly different way to configure the interior here, but he still has two control sticks, a centralized um, little kind of monitor there for targeting. And the seat color is just uh, a little bit different there with the dark tan. Uh, but yeah, other than that, kind of same deal. Fits in there really nicely and he holds onto the control sticks and it's all good, so there we go. And it's actually even a little easier and more convenient to just open and close this the traditional way than, than on the other version, so there you go. So there is your Delta 7B. All right, and finally we have the Azure Angel, which is the most heavily modified and the most different from the stock version of the ship. And uh, it's so named uh, the Azure Angel because Anakin Skywalker loves his little inside jokes, and so he named it after his secret wife, <laughs> Padme. Um, that is canonical, you can look that up on Wikipedia. 
uh, as I did. And um, yeah, the really um, obvious differences here are that this is a much more aggressive fighter. It has the huge kind of air scoops up at the front here and they have to kind of you know modify the uh, the look of the whole front of the fighter to accommodate these very large intakes and then he's got the uh, the aggressive weaponry off to the side here whereas the traditional version has these small uh, front mounted blasters here he's gone for these much much larger uh, back mounted uh, cannons top and bottom with really large extending barrels and then uh, also we have these kind of much more aggressive looking fins that kind of point off from the wingtips and from the back here. So this is a really uh, cool, fun kind of design. And I think in within the LEGO universe, this ended up becoming Admiral Akbar's uh, ship at one point. He, <laughs> he ended up kind of either buying it or finding it or stealing it or something like that. Um, that was, oh, this is a non-canonical story, but I thought it was fun. Um, but yeah, so this is um, this is a great looking ship. I, I love, I remember seeing this first pop up in the 2D show um, way back in whatever it was, 2005 or so, and just instantly falling in love with this thing. I think it's, it's so cool. And I actually can't believe that so many years later we did get an official LEGO set depicting this ship. So uh, that's kind of crazy. And um, actually there have been official sets of all of the, the mocks I'm showing you today. So that's kind of fun. You can kind of uh, compare if you do end up getting them. Um, yeah, and then this one had, uh, again, the fixed uh, astromech unit, but uh, it's centered, so I decided to go ahead and just make it be able to have the entire body of the, um, of the R4 unit in here. And so it has the same uh, technique as the other one with the little panels off to the side, which you can just kind of peel off and you know, pull R4 out of there. So same look as before. And then, um, with you know, because his body is white and the little panels are white uh, that kind of hug up against the side of him. I figured it was it was good enough to look like it was mounted just the head. Um, or you could just modify it yourself and you could just remove the body and you can just kind of uh, stick a couple of uh, you know two by two white bricks down in there and you can just kind of permanently attach it to the ship if that's what you want to do. Uh, but both my version and the official Lego set opted to have the fully removable body um, and I think that is a cool a cool thing, uh, you know, for play at least, it's nice to have that. Um, so again, we've got the matching uh, engine outlet color here with the blue that matches the overall color scheme. I do still have the um, spare part canisters here, although they're slightly different in the way that they're configured. So they're just two little opening doors at the side. And then the, um, oops, oh, I have a, a weak clip on this side so that, that part's been falling off on me. Um, and then, yeah, the center part here is had to be fixed in place because of the odd shape of this back fin. I just wanted to be able to attach that from the back. But the cool thing is you can just tip that back and then open the cockpit. So again, a, a third way to access your minifigure. Um, but I think that, you know, it really gives it that nice kind of complete look where the, the back fin just sort of comes in and really uh, hugs up against the back side of that canopy there. Uh, and I think it's a good look. So it's worth kind of sacrificing that little bit of functionality in the back. And again, you can still open the doors from the side so you can still fit some couple little bits of cargo in there uh, if you want to. So there you go. Um, other than that, the engines on the bottom are uh, very different from uh, from the previous versions that you've seen, mostly because they actually connect all the way through to these front uh, intakes. I actually didn't realize that when I first watched the show. I, I didn't <laughs> pay close enough attention. I thought these were just two additional engines, but they're actually um, air intakes that feed into the main engine and I guess give it an extra boost of speed. And um, so you have this kind of continuous pipe work that goes down through the, the middle there. There's a little blue accent on the front of the engines, which I thought was a nice touch. And then you kind of have to angle, angle these inside here to get that nice kind of the look where these two center spokes are kind of facing upward. I think that's a cool look. Um, yeah, and then just I used fairly simple uh, hinged connections here to, um, or I mean, sorry, uh, clip and, and bar uh, connections to hinge up this section here with the, the little foil. Um, that comes up around the uh, or the cowling. I think it looks really nice. And uh, yeah, I mean, the color blocking isn't perfect. I, I wanted to capture as much as I could that kind of radiating blue stripes and blue and white stripes that kind of come down and the, the angle gets shallower as we get to the front. And it's not entirely successful. You know, this should really be more at this angle like this, but uh, you know, it's, it's, you get the idea, I think. And having the, the whole center section here be, be white and then it's kind of like this this kind of glowing sun almost that kind of radiates out. And then again, this um, these white stripes here should also 
technically connect in to the body there as well but um, I did the best I could again the the techniques are somewhat limiting in terms of how these wings have to connect in to the body to get the shape that I want um, and I think this is a decent representation a fair stab at it and uh, yeah I'm not I'm not too displeased so there's the Azure Angel um, again I think uh, one of the coolest single ships in Star Wars that was just only around for a short time and not many people know about it because I think the, the 2D show kind of flew under the radar for a lot of fans, especially modern fans who may never have seen this. So I'm glad to be able to dust it off and bring it back. So there you go. Hopefully you guys get a kick out of it. Okay, so there are your three Delta 7 variations. Hopefully you guys got a kick out of seeing these today and I showed you everything that you wanted to see. I think I did cover pretty much every angle on them. So um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are all tuckered out from seeing every single uh, element of these ships. <laughs> if you guys do go ahead and purchase the instructions, I thank you. That really, really helps to support the channel. And each, um, each purchase does come with a PDF building guide, which is uh, similar to what you'd see in an official Lego set. Uh, I try to make sure that everything is very clear and readable. And um, also it comes with a parts list that is uh, easily uploadable to Rebrickable or a third party uh, Lego vendor of your choice. So it makes it really easy for you to order the parts that you need. Uh, and it comes with the actual digital file, which is the 3D model of the ship itself, which you can then open up and tinker around with, change the colors if you want to, order different kind of variations, um, and just you know get those parts uh, as well. You can just easily upload those files directly to Bricklink as well and generate a parts list that way. So there's lots of customizable flexibility when you guys um, are you know thinking about getting your own Delta 7. And whichever version you want to do, you can kind of um, try to make it happen. So um, I think that's a really cool feature of uh, Rebrickable and Bricklink and um, Studio that doesn't really get talked about enough is just the ability to make your own. So um, so yeah, uh, take advantage of that. And if you guys do end up making any additional cool variations, please tag me on social media. I love to see those things. So um, that's a great way for you to communicate and uh, show your love for the Two Bricks uh, brand. <laughs> such as it is and um, and I just really personally love to see it so um, yeah I do encourage that for sure um, all right guys so that's about it for today thank you again for watching if you watched all the way up to the end much love you guys are awesome and uh, I'm gonna get to work on the next video I've got lots more cool things to bring you so I gotta get to it uh, thanks you guys I'll see you on the next video and may the force be with you